Hi, and welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show. What have we got coming up this week? Mm, well, Rocky Mountain release a new Slayer. They do indeed. There's a new orange stage bike. This one's the 7. Mm, and Olin's enter the XE market. And Nick and I drop the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the topic today is do things break more now than they used to? Now, let, let me just start off. We're not going to be shaming anyone here. Like, things do break. Um, if you push them to the limits, they're going to break. I mean, let's talk about wheels, for example. If they were built to not break at all, they would be a terrible ride, wouldn't they? Oh, so absolutely, there, yeah. there is a balance to be had. But the question is, do things build, break more now than they used to, Doddy? Um, do you know what? I, I'm going to say no. I think you might see it more because people are, there's more types of racing. We saw a very unlucky bottom bracket just fall out of a bike. Just fell out. In a, in a race at the weekend. Just riding along. <laughs> yeah, literally just riding along. That's the actual case of that. Um, but do you know what? That stuff's always broken. You know, and, and actually I think stuff used to break a lot more because stuff wasn't as good, hadn't been refined as long as it has now, and it was always being used inappropriately because mm. there wasn't really any defined parameters. Mm, uh -huh. Yeah, no, we have categories now mm. that um, allow for people, you know, doing burlier things on it. So maybe a trail and enduro bike, even 10 years ago, looks very much like a cross-country bike now. Yeah. And people were trying to ride the sort of new categories and, you know, burlier descents or whatnot on that bike. So maybe it was just inappropriate use a lot of the time. Um, but are we still inappropriately using things now? Is that when things break. I mean, we definitely see people riding or being a bit weight weenie-ish, aren't, aren't they? Yeah. Even with a trail set of wheels, they're concerned with weight. Maybe they shouldn't be. Maybe they should be more concerned with strength. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree with you. I do think a lot of the time stuff breaking is, on many occasions, down to people picking stuff that is too light for mm -hmm. their intention. Um, and, and I reckon, hadn't thought about this until just now, um, <laughs> one of the reasons we've got to that is, I'd say, because of 29 inch wheels. So in 26 inch mm. wheels, you could have a burly wheel. I mean, a wheel size arguably being smaller should technically be stronger, but um, mm. it was easier to get a lighter wheel just physically because it's smaller. Yeah. 29 inch wheels, certainly with tires and things, it's much harder to get a lighter weight. So I can understand why people chase a lighter weight wheel. Yeah, I, I prefer to run lightweight wheels, but I think I'm fairly smooth on a bike despite being heavy. Yeah. Whereas Rich, he's lighter than me and he just, he just kills stuff. And it's I no know. fault of anything he kills, he just rides really aggressively through things. Yeah, I remember when I was racing XC, people were resisting the move up to 29 because they were just too heavy. Yeah, yeah. And now you just wouldn't even think about it, but they are a lot lighter now than they were. Maybe they are more breakable. Maybe we just sacrifice that sort of strength for the, the benefits of a bigger wheel that's lighter. I mean, there's certainly more companies nowadays offering a lifetime warranty and crash yeah. replacement on carbon wheels, which is fantastic. Um, and I've got to say, head like um, hats off to SRAM as well, doing the sort of replaceable parts on their new Axis derailleurs yeah. as well, because idea. I feel like we've sort of lost that a little bit. Some brakes don't have replaceable levers and you have to buy a whole unit. Yeah. So I really hope that comes back into the industry. Um, but we did see a lot of things breaking in the racing scene at the moment. We've seen people crashing on the start line. We had the bottom bracket issue. We've had the handlebars just breaking on yeah. the by crashing on the start line. I mean, fair enough, it's on concrete and they are very flyweight parts. In I mean, XC. exceptionally lightweight on some of them, yeah. Mm. We've seen batteries falling off as well. That was um, unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was um, Kabush and uh, XC Marathon lost a battery and, you know, lost his lead for lost that. Lost in the and, race, yeah. I know, and then uh, didn't Rich spot one just hanging around he on did. a downhill track? I, I did laugh when I, when I saw that, to be fair. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but maybe, I mean, referring to Rich's post and, you know, us sort of sharing um, the bottom bracket issue in the racing, maybe we just see it more. Maybe things aren't breaking more. Maybe we just, because of social media, we're sharing it all the time. And we, we never used to share things like that back in the 90s, did we? Well, it wasn't I've, all over the news. I mean, I've got, um, I, I got to say one thing. It was when I was working at Man Biking UK magazine, especially in the early 2000s, People used to be really proud of breaking stuff. Oh. <laughs> like it was a completely different mentality. It was like, check it out, I just snap my down tube on my bike. Like, oh, can I have some stickers? Days. And it was yeah. a thing. But like back then, frames used to break all the time. Yeah. And it just doesn't happen now. Yeah, all right, frames crack and things happen yeah. and crash damage. Like, Minar 
flipping broke his bike in half, didn't he? He did. You know, and he hit that thing. And that was like, the bike's not designed to withstand crashes. If they were designed to withstand crashes like that, they weigh a flipping ton. Yeah. I know? mean, and I, I do remember, like, it wasn't uncommon to see a pair of forks just pop out of a head tube. Yeah. On a, on a, yeah. <laughs> like, on a downhill race or a bit of free riding. Now, you really don't see that unless it's some kid who's 50 50 to table or, yeah. or like a jump or something. But uh, I don't know, should we throw it over to the viewers? Yeah, See what definitely. They think? Yeah. You've got to be some guys out there that have been riding, well, as long as you have, <laughs> into the 90s <laughs> and the noughties. Ha do things break more now than then, or is it the other way around? Um, do we think things are more breakable? I'm not sure. I'm not sure they are, but let us know down in the comments below. Okay, straight into news, and the first in news is a brand new Rocky Mountain Slayer. So the Slayer was, I guess you could say, one of their original freeride bikes, uh, launched back in the 2000s sometime, and this is their brand new version of it. So I guess you could say it nods back to freeride, but they're sort of pitching it towards big mountain and backcountry sort of stuff that I guess it is true freeriding as such. Whereas yeah. the competition kind of goes away from that, it gets a bit more severe. Uh, but this is it on screen, there's aluminium and carbon models available. Uh, this one is longer, slacker, steeper seat tube angle, all the stuff you are seeing everyone doing, but they've done this on the Slayer platform. So the carbon model has the old sandwich storage box on the down tube, and well, they call it the penalty box, so I'm guessing it's a nod to ice hockey, because uh, Canadian, being, being Canadian, <laughs> Canada, eh? Um, and the aloe one obviously doesn't have that, so there's a load of shots of it on screen. Geometry on the bikes, they've got four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. Now, because it has their four-way adjustable geometry that allows you to not only adjust the geometry, but adjust the progression in the actual bike itself. It's a very cool system on there. Uh, you can adjust the head angle 62 and a half, 63, 63.3, uh, seat angle 77, 77 and a half, and 77.8 degrees, and then reach between 424 and 514. So that's at the absolute shortest and longest between those sizes. And like I say, the four sizes that are available to you. They say it's slightly more linear in terms of the way it works, just to play a bit better with the adjustment on shock absorbers uh, that are available today. And well, that's pretty much it. 180 mil travel on the rear, paired with 180 or up to 200 on the front. So it is really a capable bike, uh, as you can see. And the two smaller sizes, smaller medium, are a mixed wheel, and the two bigger sizes, 29 front and rear. I think mm. it, looks, it looks really nice. It does, it's a nice it looks a million bike. miles apart from where, it, oh. where it's been. It just no, it looks a bit really. more modern. But it also just has a very classic silhouette, and I'm really mm. liking the sort of the old school Rocky Mountain colours as well, the beige yeah. and red. Oh, and, and some of the, the colour names actually. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're all sort of kind of like rock music. There's a uh, Black Dog, which is named after some Led yeah. Zeppelin stuff. There's uh, Smoke right, on the Water. Yeah, there, Smoke yeah. on the Water. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite a few cool names in there. I always appreciate that when a company makes a bit of an effort with that. Mm. Well, talking of revamps, Orange has revamped their stage. So formerly called the Stage 6, now the Stage 7, and it will be taking cues from their recently revamped Switch 7. Uh, so check this out on screen. It is a full 29er um, with 170 in the front and 165 in the rear. It is a proper enduro race machine built for their racing team uh, that are racing EDR at the moment. Um, they've got a new linkage which, which promises to deliver a more progressive uh, feel than the stage six. Uh, so from, it used to be a bit linear, uh, now it's got a little more ramp up um, in the sort of end stroke. So potentially good for coil. I know a lot of uh, orange uh, fans love to run a coil, don't mm. they, on the oranges. Um, also, it's a relatively high anti-squat of around about 123%, depending Ooh, on high. what gear mm. or uh, what sag you're in at that stage, but it promises to be really supportive in the pedaling too, which is becoming more and more important in EDR, I think. Um, very pedally tracks. Um, they've also dropped the down tube and concaved the uh, top tube so that they can fit a water bottle in there, which mm. obviously also important for enduro, so uh, yeah. Looking pretty snazzy in that little deep purple. It's funny, isn't it? Because orange bikes, I think I'm guilty of saying this, that you know the outline of the bikes hasn't changed a lot, but they actually refine stuff all the time. They do. Always making adjustments to stuff. Yeah, and yet it still has the classic orange look, which yeah. a lot of the orange fans love. So, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's them now. They can't go away from that Yeah, now. you can't. Um, it's the stage rear swing arm, that big thing, is like really unmistakable, mm. isn't it? And speaking of other brands that are really unmistakable, Olin Suspension. Oh. Um, everyone knows the look when you see them on the bikes. Mm. And in recent times, we saw their, I guess you'd call it a downcountry fork, 
or a short travel trail fork. They've now gone into the world of XC. So you can see a cool video on screen with a new fork and the new shock there. So the fork is the RXC34 and the shock they've got the TCX Air and the TCX2 Air shock. So they've got a whole range of these products available now uh, for cross country world. And I think it's really nice to see them going there cross country because you associate Olins, I think, heavily with downhill uh, mm. and more and more of enduro as well. So the fork has a new OTX 14 damper in there. So it's got a two chamber air spring, which has much better traction than they've been basically been able to have before. I think some people said with that down country fork, it could have been a little bit more sensitive despite how good the damping was. Uh, but this one certainly sounds like it's a very active fork. It got five positive and seven negative chamber spaces in there. Uh, the race version, 100 mil travel with a carbon crown on there, weighs 1,476 grams. Uh, 12 clicks of low speed compression and rebound available to you there. And you can also have remotes, which of course is quite a Thing in the cross-country world. Now the rear shocks on there, they've got three ride modes and they've been set up by feedback from professional racers essentially. And in terms of the rear shock, you've got the TCX1 Air, uh, it's the lightest and the most progressive, whereas the two has a slightly bigger air count on there. The weight difference between them is nominal alone, 10 grams in it, so 245 and 255 grams. Not bad, is it? Mm. They look good. I, they're really coming into racing at the moment. You see more and more in the downhill and cross country. I think there's a big push for the Olympics, I think. Um, but anyway, so Nikolai have released the G18 Hammer. So they have literally oh. dropped the hammer um, and it is a full free ride bike. Like literally they said they did not want to create a downhill bike with a few mods or just mod an existing downhill bike. This has been created from ground up. They've got some local um, terror that is actually <laughs> in Germany that is literally just hucking the heck out of a prototype in order to come up with this geometry and this is what they come up with and honestly I mean it does it doesn't look a million miles off of an early noughties kind of free ride bike but you know what if it ain't broke you know, why change it? Um, they've built it low and compact for tricks. It is a mini mullet, so Ooh. that is 26 in the rear, 27.5 in the front. Don't let Toff find out about that. <laughs> which we saw <laughs> was pretty much a 50-50 setup in uh, Rampage, so it obviously works. Chain stays are extremely short at 420 uh, mils. It's at 186 millimeters of rear travel and designed to have 200 mils of double crown fork. So it is, you know, you you're not going to be pedaling this up the fire road and riding it down. Um, 63 degree steering angle, a full 7020 aluminium, five year warranty. Uh, it will come as a single speed as well, external cable routing for sort of quick service and rattle free um, design. Also, uh, they've decided that there's no dropper position like post option on this. This is a free ride bike and nor is there a bottle cage there. So I think what we're seeing is that this isn't niche, it's specialist yeah. at the end of the day. Oh, well, I like and that. Yeah, I think. I That's, think there's that could a be a marketing for that. term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have that, Nikolai. It's, it's fine. <laughs> okay, and the last thing in news, well, I'm kind of a bit of speculation here, but uh, Nino Scherter obviously won his 34th World Cup at the weekend, which um, I guess you could say, you know, he's uh, amongst the greatest of all times, uh, which goes alongside, if I'm not mistaken, with 10 world champion titles uh, and 10 World Cup overall wins. Mm, uh, he is which the GOAT now in XC. It's just it's staggering, isn't it? Mm. Um, anyway, if you have a look at his forks in this shot here, it looks a lot to me that it's got a flight attendant set up on the fork. Now, flight attendant, as far as I know, and I've not missed anything, is only available for longer travel forks like the Lyrics, uh, which we've obviously seen over the last few years on Canyon and YT and various other bikes. But I thought from the beginning, I was thinking, that's an XE race product, mm. if I've ever seen one. Mm. The ability for everything to lock out on that when it's needed automatically without having to worry about it. Absolutely. It's cross country. And if you look at this image from the front, which is from that race at the weekend, it even says flight attendant on the fork. It's not even black box. <laughs> So is this is this something just done for Nino, or is this something we're going to see? Obviously, you can't see the rear shot because oh, it's got it's all tucked away, but you can bet there's one in there as well. It makes total sense for XC. I reckon they'll bring it out to the public for sure. And I am really interested in that. Mm. So I've ridden flight attendant a few times, and it's it's exceptional the way it works. But I'm not convinced on longer travel bikes for myself that it's something I need for racer. I think absolutely no doubt. But a cross country one, I think that's just that's where cross country is proper gains at the moment. <laughs> 
Okay, it's quiz time for you people. And, uh, well, we've got some news-based quizzes here. So, uh, what model bike did Nikolai make that ended up turning into a brand of its own? I know. Yeah, we should know. <laughs> have you got a quiz? Uh, yeah, okay, us? yeah. Um, orange bikes have been making <laughs> aluminium bikes, or aluminium bikes, depending where you're from, since 1988. But what's so special about the way they make the stage, in mm. particular, something out back? Yeah, swing arm, suspicious. Uh, ridden to fame by the freeride legend Wade Simmons, when was the Rocky Mountain Slayer first released? Give you a clue, it was at the same time that Rampage started. Ooh, mm. I know that as well. Okay, into some comments then from last week's show. Um, local, Roop Dog says, no maintenance job in, in my field is ever as straightforward as it seems. Rule of life. Um, and for a moment, I thought Anna was wearing red boxer shorts under baggies. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, he said he thought I was saying to wear red boxer shorts under his baggies because it would make him faster. I was talking about boxers, like boxing boxers, wearing red makes them more aggressive. So it makes you faster. There's a psychological thing. It was a long time ago. I mean, everyone knows red's faster. Is that, <laughs> is that where you're going with it? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> um, so Christopher Gronseth says, that alignment tool is dope. I need one now. It's and you, sir, know what you're talking about. Yeah, yes, it is. Your own heart. Uh, Christian Schneider, another regular. Mm -hmm. um, so good to have the dream team back together again. Uh, <laughs> my recent mechanical nightmare was converting my road bike to DI2. Oh dear. Ooh. Internally routed cables, what a mess. Uh, <laughs> on the mountain bike side, I can't praise my Ibis Ritmo with the internal routing enough. You just push the brake hose in, it comes out where it should. It is great to build, but make sure you lubricate those because they can fill up with grit and get cemented. Ooh, that's uh, good solid advice. That'd yes, be the same for anyone is. with internal channels, I reckon. Yeah. Um, so James uh, Latonia says, me and my brother converted an old 26 inch wheel into tubeless. It took us hours of several <laughs> tries on seating the bead, uh, bead using my floor pump. It was late the night already and we needed the bike for the next day. Uh, went to the nearby gas station to use the compressor and oh, disaster, God. a loud bang in the gas station. Car <laughs> alarms went off, nearby apartment <laughs> complexes, tenants were calling 911. Oh my uh, goodness. Brilliant. Um, as Sam Blancon says, uh, lol, the account from Doddy that sounded like someone mending a car, <laughs> not a bike. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. It that, looked yeah. like yeah. you tried to rewire your windscreen wipers. Well, we, or we laughed about it. Didn't it was, it? Was all yeah. that. Rubbish the on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jake uh, Brack Breakbill says, after 30 plus years of riding and having to buy specialty tools for each new bike, I have a toolbox full of tools now that I would never use. I do as well. I've got one of those, all those old bottom bracket yeah. tools. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I know exactly where you're going with that one. Uh, and the last one from Stuart Tarzan's call. Uh, I've had the hose come off the syringe when pushing brake fluid into a Shimano caliper oh. whilst concentrating on the brake lever. Um, yeah, well, oh, yeah, just squirting it everywhere, yeah. basically. Yeah, no, never good. Nice. Uh, unlucky. Oh, it's always nice to know that other people struggle as well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got an awesome top mod. I mean, this is the epitome of top mod here. Um, I've got Justin here who has purchased an orange Patriot, but he's been very patriotic with it. Um, he is in the Royal Air Force. He's served for 30 years and his grandfather wow. also served the RAF and sadly was shot down over France um, in his Lancaster bo uh, bomber in 1944, which is where he still lays. Um, and when he bought the orange Patriot, he decided to dedicate it to his grandfather and the RAF, and he's done this. He's effectively added Aww. anything that he can to make it um, more like his grandfather's Lancaster bombers. So he's got images and stickers of his grandfather's bomber there, um, as well hmm. as some poppies. Um, he's also got the uh, Marzocchi bombers, bomber obviously, on yeah. the front, <laughs> um, and even the bomb stem as well, uh, with some sort of... Um, uh, military sort of fighter um, artwork on there. But the Orange Patriot always had the sort of RAF roundel yeah. on its logo anyway, so it kind of lended itself um, to that artwork. So yeah, I just thought that was awesome. Um, and he said he's been to the Malvern Classic, so I guess we might see him there again yeah. this year. Yeah, I can't remember if I've seen it or not. It feels familiar, but I've seen a lot of orange bikes. But I yeah. absolutely love the story. I've got a little, a little goosey chill know, there. Got, reading. That's a really nice story. Uh, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and if you're at the Malvern, come say hi. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really nice story, and I love what you've done that. It's a great nod. Mm. Really, really cool. 
Okay, so the Nikolai model that sort of became a brand in itself was... The Geometron. It was indeed yeah. um, a partnership with Chris Porter of Mojo Suspension here in... Well, not here, but next door in Very Wales. Very close by, yeah. Um, orange bikes have been making aluminum bikes, um, but the stage is a bit different because they use a monocoque design, which if you look at that swing arm, that's not a tube. That is effectively like folded aluminium and then seam welded. So uh, suggested to be lighter and stronger for than tubing mm. effectively. Um, and then, did you know? Did you know this one? The Slayer. How old it is? Really? Um, it is from two thousand and one. Uh, uh, ridden by Wade Simmons. Wade Simmons originally. I, yep. And I, ridden. I think he was he in Rampage. He was, but I don't know if he would have ridden the Slayer. He might have been on an RM, right, RM seven or nine. Um, and I do know that because I was one of those people in that generation had all the VHS cassettes yeah. of all of that stuff with Wade <laughs> and Gully and all the early yeah. riders, Van der Ham. So yeah. effectively at the start of Freeride, yeah. really, you could say. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem so long ago, 2001. Does well, it also it? had the Rocky Mountain Through Riders. Oh. Do you remember that story? Basically, yeah. Cannondale, uh, in a roundabout way, tried to patent the term free ride within mountain biking really? and Cam and Rocky Mountain had the free riding team and they were like uh, okay so you're going to try and sue us okay so <laughs> they used it to their advantage and they launched the Rocky Mountain throw riders and they had shots of them wearing um, ice hockey jerseys with big afros on huh. and it worked so well for them and Cannondale actually looked a bit daft for challenging it huh. in the first place but yeah it was a great story about Rocky. Huh. Hence still having the Canadian sort yeah. of hockey references in yeah. the um, penalty box. Hmm. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week. Um, if you want some more tech though, do head over to a video that Rich did for us at the weekend with all of the downhill tech from Lenserhide because there was an absolute yeah. horde of There's crackers, loads. shrouds mm. and prototypes and all sorts in there. And it's Lee Gang this weekend, which means we're going to do another one. Um, so do check out some of the videos coming out this weekend or potentially Monday uh, if you want more of that. But for now, I guess we better say goodbye. Ta-ra. Bye. It's lunchtime here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, my belly's growling. <laughs>